Okay, in this video, I will talk about lab topology that I will use in this Citrix NetScaler VPX course. This is my lab topology for this course, and as you can see in this network topology, I have Citrix NetScaler in the middle of two networks internal network represented by 10.10.10 slash 24 and external network represent, represented by 172.16.21.0 slash 24 network. In this topology, or the topology that I'm using here, and there is no DMZ. Is this the most commonly used topology? No, not really. Uh, in a real world environment, you will see all sorts of topologies Typically, you will find Netscaler in DMZ environment, but in some scenario, you may find Netscaler placed in internal network. Or in some scenario, you will find exactly like what I have here. As you can see in this diagram, Netscaler have two interfaces or two arms. One interface goes to external network, and this way, Netscaler will talk to my external router. As you can see, their IP range or IP address is in the same range. Um, and another arm or another interface connected to internal network. And that's where Netscaler subnet IP and management IP will be defined. So Netscaler can talk that I can manage Netscaler as well as Netscaler can use Submit IP to talk to internal resources. Now, you may say, is this really a good idea to expose Netscaler directly to internet? Not necessarily, and honestly, it's a, it's, it's a good idea that if you have a firewall in front of Netscaler, it could be any sort of firewall. Uh, it could be a specialized dedicated firewall, for example, you may have something like this, a firewall, an external IP is defined to the firewall and it's added to one of the DMZ virtual IP that will be used by Netscaler as virtual IP. You may have another firewall here and maybe just one interface of Netscaler to DMZ. You may even have a Netscaler in internal network. You may have a firewall here, just one big bad firewall, and Netscaler or internal network connected with one interface to your internal switch. This case, just you need to make sure that all those servers flow, traffic that you want to load balance must pass through that scale. So there are different ways, different topologies, all sorts of uh, possibilities. I would say endless possibilities, lots of deployment scenarios. In another video, in next video, I will show you a slide in which I will show you a most common topology used in real world. Uh, deployment scenarios so you will understand a little better. In my case it's simple lab environment so I'm just using this topology. Okay just to clear one thing here as you can see my Netscaler and external router have the same IP range means there is no firewall in between. I don't have a dedicated firewall here, but I have an integrated firewall, which is running the router. In real world environment, you may have a very big high throughput enterprise class router, which can also do firewalling. Sometimes there you know, are a specialized module that can be inserted into those devices. Or sometimes it's just a software function, it all depends. Um, there are many vendors who provide this type of devices, Cisco, Juniper, and many others. Or the least you can do 
you can define access control lists here, packet filters, and allow only the traffic which you are hosting through Netscape. For example, I will be load balancing HTTP and HTTPS servers using Netscaler. So what I can do, I can create a packet filter here and only allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic to go through this Netscaler. Netscaler itself has application layer firewall and it can protect itself against distributed denial of services attacks. It uses sync cookies to do that and it can protect against uh, your application against zero day attacks as well. It all depends on the type of licensing you have. It can also work as an SSL VPN. So if you allow S443 through your packet filter, it can also do that. This is my lab topology, as I said, one external interface, one internal interface. As you can see, get Netscaler is playing a vital role in my environment. That if my internal server wants to communicate with outside world, let's say a server wants to get an update from Microsoft website, it has to go through Netscaler. That's, it cannot bypass Netscaler because they are connected to switch, switch connected. Netscaler. So Netscaler is sort of a gateway in my scenario. Uh, in my case, in real life, it, it, it might not be the case. Usually it's not. In some cases it is. But this is the case in my environment where Netscaler is working as a gateway as well. Um, if this is the case, I would strongly recommend that you take extra precautions, make sure that you have a proper firewalls in place or at least in an access list like I'm doing in my scenario or, or try to alter the topology that would best fit as per your security policy. I will show you uh, one topology in next video where there is a real life uh, design that reflects the real life deployment. But this is my lab topology here. Internal, external, simple, nothing fancy. Uh, one more thing I would like to mention here, it's an important point. By default, that scalar works as hub means if I connect more than one interface to the same network, Whenever NetScaler transmits data or transmits packets, it transmits on all interfaces. So don't connect more than one interface to a single network. This may cause layer 3 loops or some problems in your network. Unless, or unless you are defining VLANs. If you are defining VLANs, then you specify submit IP to your interface and you define VLAN IDs and then you can do those ether channel link aggregation and all that stuff and that routing table comes to play and all that stuff but by default that scalar behavior is, is works as hub that if let's say it has three interfaces connected to the switch it will pass traffic to all these three interfaces so this may cause a problem in some scenarios. So make sure if you're not using VLAN, just connect one interface per network. Otherwise it may cause looping or some layer three network issues. Okay. So this is it guys. This is my lab topology. Uh, one more thing here, I will use Windows Server 2012 R2 based certificate authority here. I will generate SSL certificates for lab environment because one of the video where we do SSL offloading, I will install certificate on Netscaler and then Netscaler will do SSL offloading for web servers. And I have internal, as you say, domain controller, DNS, DHCP and I'll have external clients and they will connect to this, uh, these servers and try to act and note that scalar will load balance.
the traffic between these web servers. We'll do SSL offloading. And of course, we will see some other features like HTTP compression, session persistence, as well as, of course, NetScaler access gateway, SSL VPN, and all that. So this is it, guys. This is the lab topology. And I'll see you in the next video where I will show you a real life uh, case of NetScaler deployment. A real life design that you will see most likely in most of these scenarios. Not necessarily all, as I say, I'm repeating myself again and again that there is no hard and fast rule of deploying that scaler. It all depends on your organization security policies, where you want to place, what flexibility you have. But there are some common deployment scenarios, and the scenario that I will show you in the next video is one of the common deployments.